Stories like Wilson's are common throughout the area, but the epicenter of the most recent sightings is the island of Adam Davies are now just an hour's canoe ride from where locals claim to have seen the Orang Pendek. With the last obstacle behind them, the team set up their expedition base camp. Now the hunt begins. We finally arrived at base camp. Um, we've spent days travelling here, we've climbed that mountain, we were covered in sweat, and now finally we're here. One of the good things about being here is that a couple of days ago the guides built um, our shelter. Now we're going to be spending most of the time here, um, obviously when we're resting, we're going to be eating and sleeping here, uh, and also cooking here, all the lovely dried fish we bought and all the other things. What I know about the Orang Pendek is from people who've done a lot of detailed research here, like Jeremy. Um, it's, it's obviously bipedal. Um, it varies in size and colour. It's an opportunist feeder, um, and it seems extremely intelligent. It's, um, it's a unique and, and obviously a very rare species. As the search is about to begin, the rainforest lives up to its name. It rains non-stop for almost two full days. The expedition is halted. Most animals hunker down in storms, so a search now would be futile anyway. If the storm doesn't break soon, the entire trip will be in jeopardy. This rain, I've never ever seen anything like it. I've been up to Gurun Karinshi. This is my fourth time here, and it's absolutely chucking it down. The rain is awesome. The place is beautiful, but it's just so frustrating. Finally, a break in the clouds. The expedition is back in action. Well, the principal aim of, of Project Orion Pendek was to validate the claims we made about our sightings either some DNA evidence, hairs, bones, some kind of skin matter, or, in my case, a good, clear photograph. And that's the one thing that, up until now, neither myself nor anyone else has managed to, to photograph. Hey, Donnie. Any look at the bagu, sir, sir? for honini. But getting a photograph of Orang Pendek will not be easy. The one problem with Orang Pendek is it, it seems to be highly mobile. So it's not living in a territory, or not, certainly not living in a very small territory. And also it's not following a set route. There's always going to be die-hard skeptics. That are, they're not going, to, not going to be convinced unless you dump a body on their desk. Turn the camera on. While the heavy rains have washed all the game trails clean of old tracks, it also provides the team with a unique opportunity. Just like the research team, the animals of the forest are on the move, and the signs are fresh. There's our first sign of wild animals here. You can see wild pigs have been turning up this ground here, looking for roots or reptiles or insects to eat. So I came in here to have a look if there was any sign. Doesn't seem to be any sign of our own pen neck, but what we have got is a mound of tapir dung. It's not just animal tracks that give hold in hope. This area also has good food sources. So to my mind, for OP, this is an absolute classic location. It's nice and open, plenty of things to eat. One of the things we found it's quite commonly eating are these, these gingers. And what it does is break, usually quite high like this, and then again quite low and then twist this stem. So what we're after is this white pith inside. It's not bad. More freshly minted animal tracks are a good sign. The animals of the forest are on the move again. We've chosen a spot here for the camera. There's a small trail coming up. There's a 
what I call a topographic channeling is happening here. It's likely any animals coming down from the mountain here, wanting to cross over into this valley, are going to use this. It's not particularly pleasant to walk through this forest here, and it's, it's, it's very steep this side. Rain clouds can be seen in the distance. Time is running out. Because our appendix are biped, it's still going to be taller than most animals we'd usually photo trap. So we have to have the camera far enough back so we don't end up with a picture of a chest with no head. While Holden works on setting up the traps, Adam Davies gathers his gear to head in another direction. The two have decided to split up to cover as much ground as possible. Now behind Camp 2 is an area of the greatest concentration of those sightings where I found a number of trails in different years. If we do find something, I have um, scalpels, tweezers and ethanol samples, so hopefully we can get some hairs and that can lead to DNA analysis. I love tracking um, these, these, these animals, yeah, especially as I'm firmly convinced that one's around this area, it's a massive rush. Yeah, so if we, if we see something, you know, it's going to be wild. Oh, I know, a footprint. Davies is working with the most experienced guide in the region, a local by the name of Sahar. We've found our first animal print of the day, um, which is obviously good news because um, it means the ground isn't so wet and we can get prints. This one here, this small print, is an Asian golden cat. Just a few hundred yards from camp, Davies makes an even more ominous discovery. Evidence that another animal is in the area, a potentially dangerous predator. What Sahar's saying is, this, um, this is the bones of a deer that's been killed by a tiger around here. Just a few hundred yards from the base camp, Adam Davies has found several carcasses and signs that this is a fresh feeding site for a tiger. At over seven feet long and up to 300 pounds, the Sumatran tiger is the top predator here. It feeds on deer, boar, and even primates like orangutans and occasionally humans. I'm no anatomist, but my initial um, uneducated view about these things is it would fit quite neatly in there. <laughs> so there we go, pig. It's not, a, it obviously wasn't a uh, an orang pendek, we're not going to be that lucky. <laughs> Davies estimates the carcass is only days old. The bones rot a lot in the jungle, yeah? Can you see the fungus on the, on the tip of it already? Yeah. Finding an orang pendek carcass would be a rare find indeed. As these bones show, it takes the jungle little time to break down remains. Just past the trail from the pig and deer bones are signs of more animals. Deer. Bear. Yeah, this is some bear. Claiming yeah. She's close. Where she climbed up there? Yeah. Think he might be up there now? <laughs> no. Skeptics say the moon jab or sun bear is one likely animal that people could mistake for the orang pendek. At only four feet tall, it is the smallest bear species. It can walk briefly on its hind legs and is an excellent climber. So here we've just found some claw marks from Malay sun bear. This is probably the the biggest culprit in confusion with Orin Pendek. Similar kind of size, similar kind of habits, but probably the the most damning thing is that the the footprint that a bear leaves looks much more like a small human footprint than that left by Orin Pendek. The true identity of the Orang Pendek has long been a mystery. When Venetian explorer Marco Polo was visiting the island of Sumatra in 1295, islanders allegedly presented him with a small ape-like man. They had seen exactly the same thing. The local people were reporting this erect bipedal ape gliding in and out of the forest. They 
come out of the edge of the forest into plantations, and that's where they've been seen most by people at dawn and dusk. Jeremy Holden also claims to have seen the Orang Pendek and says that it is not a sun bear or any other known animal. The first thing I thought was it was, it was much bigger than I'd expected. At a lower elevation near the park's entrance, Jeremy Holden first noticed the unusual footprint in a potato field. I called my guide over and said, you know, what's this? And he immediately said, this is our appendix. Holden followed the trail into the forest. And as I made my way in, I saw a banana palm sway like this. So I just ducked down. And then, no more than seven meters away, I saw the animal pass in front of me. So it was, it was very close. I had a camera around my neck, I was very close to it, but I just kept quiet and watched it just briefly pass. Although he never saw the face, Holden did get a good profile view of the creature. I saw the side of the head and the, the huge arms which were moving like a human when that walks and down to the waist. But something that's very erect, it wasn't stooped over, it wasn't shuffling or stumbling like I've seen orangutans do when they're on the ground. This was something that was clearly at home walking on two legs. With this it was a, a clear pelt of what appeared to be quite short hair. And the, the colour of the animal I saw was like a yellowish, almost like dried grass. Even now, the sighting haunts Holden. With a camera around his neck, he never took a photo. Seeing Orin Pendek was probably the greatest achievement, the greatest uh, victory in my whole life. Not photographing it is certainly it, is my greatest failure. Davies shares Holden's frustration. When you know something's there, you know something's tangible. Um, I just want to do my best to try and prove it. Adam Davies is now near the same spot where he found his best track in 2001. The heavy rain has washed these trails clean of any animal sign. They have found nothing. But that is about to change. Oh, wait. What's this? What? Prince. Oh, yeah. What would you make of that? Have a look. No, oh, I think it's a... Uh... Orang Pendek footprint. Orang Pendek footprint? Brilliant! Yeah, I think so. Why? Ah, oh, I see the shape, yeah. You can see the opposable thumb, yeah? I think so. It's the same size as the prints that we found last yeah. time near here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic! Well done! At about six inches in diameter, with short toes and an opposable thumb, the print appears to be similar to the track he found here in 2001. Well, what I want you to do, right, what I want you to do is if you go up, go up the trail, yeah, mm. and have a look to see if you can see any more, yeah. okay? Because I don't want to corrupt the ground by two of us walking on it. Uh -huh. If you see any hairs, okay. don't touch them. Just, just tell me where they are. Yes. So you go and have a look now, yeah, and I'll stay here. Yeah. If you see anything, we'll come back and discuss them, okay? Yeah, and we'll make a plaster of Paris cast of this one, yeah? Okay, right. In a bit. For his guide, Adam. For his guide, cheers, mate. Yeah. Adam, for his guide. Adam, for his guide. One good print could be enough to prove this is the same animal from 2001. Additional prints could reveal a resident population. Adam, come here. What have you got, Sahar? You can see uh, one more footprint. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It is. Orang Pendek? Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe. Orang Pendek. It's the same size as the other one. Yeah, yeah, see. So the animals come through here on a trail. Oh, that's brilliant. Got another one. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really good work, Sahar. I can't believe it. This is in the same place, it's the same shape as the other ones we found last time. Yeah. In all, they find four distinct prints spread out over 200 yards before the trail goes cold. But there is another important clue here.